Hi guys, Tony from Dive Tech in Grand Cayman. Today we're going to talk about rebreather buoyancy. Many people think buoyancy on a rebreather is very difficult. It's not difficult, but it's different to what you've known on traditional open circuit. The biggest difficulty for most is that you need to unlearn all of the muscle memory you've developed over your years of open circuit diving. The more experience you have, the harder it may be to unlearn it. So let's take a look at why rebreather buoyancy is different and what to do about it. When we dive traditional open circuit, we have two basic bladders of gas with us, our lungs and our BCD. Of course, we all know that on open circuit, we can fine tune our buoyancy with our lungs. As we breathe in from our scuba tank, our lung volume expands. We become more buoyant and we begin to rise up. As we breathe out into the water column, our lung volume decreases. We become less buoyant and we begin to descend. Now let's take a look at this on a rebreather. We still have our same two bladders of gas with us, but the difference is we are no longer breathing in from a compressed tank and out into the water. We are breathing in and out of a bag known as a counter lung. This means as we breathe in and out, as long as we are at a constant depth, our overall volume does not change. As we inhale, our body's lungs still expand, but we are inhaling from our rebreather counter lungs, which get smaller. As we exhale, the inverse happens. Our lungs get smaller, but we exhale into these same counter lungs. Our total volume stays the same. So the fine tuning of buoyancy we used to use on open circuit can no longer be controlled with our breathing cycle. After I've explained this concept, the question I get next is, so how do we maintain buoyancy? And the answer is simply this, by swimming. We swim up and down. Rebreathers like constant depth, and the easiest way is to pick a depth and stay there as best you can. I call it a target depth. Let's say our target depth is 60 feet. We swim down to 60 feet, and then we add gas to our counter lungs so we have enough volume to breathe. Then we add gas to our wing to make us neutral for 60 feet. As we conduct the dive, we want to stay as close to 60 feet as we can. If we find ourselves at 61 feet, we swim back up. If we find ourselves at 59 feet, we swim back down. Now, of course, this is an overly simplified explanation. And to be clear, my 60 foot depth example is arbitrary. We can do this, of course, for any depth, and we can select as many target depths as we want. We can do multi-level profiles up, down, or both. But my suggestion is try to avoid the needless up and down movements. Your profile on an open circuit dive might look something like this. When you're diving a rebreather, what you should be looking for is a profile that looks like this. What you don't want to do is add and vent gas with every little depth change. The only time you want to vent or add gas is if you plan to stay at this new target depth. Some tricks to help you. Instead of going up and over an obstacle underwater, go around it if you can. Proper weighting is key. You want to have your rebreather as close to neutrally buoyant as you can. The more negative it is, the more air you need to have in a wing to compensate, which simply means more volume of air to expand and contract as you go up and down, exacerbating the issue. A properly trimmed rebreather is much easier. Take the time to rig your configuration so you can be perfectly trimmed out without having to fin to keep yourself level. As you get more experience on a rebreather, reading the nuances of the loop will become easier and so will your buoyancy. That's it. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you diving with us soon.